，啦啦啦啦，啦啦啦啦，嘿嘿嘿，拉古莎。What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Klonoa 2: Lunatia's Veil.、Mm, I'm still riding high off the end of that last episode. I just can't. It's just sinking in right now that this is actually happening. That I get to finally do this. This is a game I've always dreamed of Let's Playing, but never really gotten around to. I, I don't know if it was kind of a personal thing. I just wanted to have my copy back, and just didn't feel the same regardless. That's the special kind of game, you know what I mean? When it just feels like your personal copy is something you'll never get rid of. Like you'd sell the system, but you'd have to hold on to that one game. And for the PlayStation 2, hmm, actually, I'm not even sure if Klonoa 2 would be that. It's just, God, the PlayStation 2 is just such an incredible. Here's the thing: if I ever made a top 10 list of my favorite video game systems of all time, I could not make a choice for number one. I could not settle on just one. It would have to be a tie between the Super Nintendo and the PlayStation 2, because both systems just mean incredible things to me. One defined my childhood, and one defined my teenage years. And but I would definitely never want to put them in a battle to the death, because I want them both alive. <laughs> I can't imagine who I would be as a person without either of these experiences. Ah, but that said, look at this place. Just look at this world. All of the details that went into it, all of the little things here and there that you don't even pay attention to, like these statues. What are these things? What is their purpose in the environment? You have to know that at some point somebody was using those for something. There's a reason mushrooms grow this big in this place. There's an ecosystem, an environment, a reason for every little detail. And I love games that flesh out that their own world that well. And trust me, we will be getting into all of those little details eventually. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil anything right now. Patience, young Padawans. Patience, patience, patience. These jumps are always really treacherous. You have to make sure you go at just the right moment. <laughs> and of course, sharks. Don't want to get hit in the slate. What? How did Proton John say it slammed in the face of the shark? Uh, by the way, I don't know if I explained that. Alarm clocks are your checkpoints in this game. If you happen to lose all of your health, you start back over at the at the last alarm clock you actually pop. Just、uh, one final mechanic. I'm glad we're we've got most of that out of the way because past that, all the other mechanics, the ways you toy around with enemy pickups and everything, is just you'll learn by seeing me do. By the way, speaking of which, right here. <laughs> Good lord. He didn't stand a chance. All right, run, 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 run. There's also a heart right there, just in case you fell for the trap. You ran too fast after that one guy, and you got eaten yourself.、Right, come on now. I have things to do, places to be, people to meet, enemies to throw, gems to collect. So many things to do in this game, and I can't do them all in one video, and it makes me super sad. Well, I technically could do it all in one video. I have seen just full playthroughs on YouTube, but didn't that fad kind of die out years ago? Like people just prefer everything being in one segmented spot instead of watching the whole game at once. I don't know. I'd like your feedback on that. Do you like videos that have a little bit more meat to them, or do you like the things that you can watch just in bits and segments that aren't too long after all? This would be an interesting idea for demographics. Help me give you guys what you want. Something a little more convenient on my channel. Hey, didn't we pass another one of these statues earlier? Nah, this is the current statue of the Mother Goddess Claire. Oh? Then what was the other one? That's a statue of Claire the Ancient, and they say it was all that remained after she was purged of all evil. Interesting. Wait. So, what's the story behind that? Well, they just kind of leave it up to you. That's the interesting thing about this narrative. It gives you. I I think the best analogy for it is, Klonoa 2's world is kind of like Adventure Time. You just get kind of thrown right into the middle of everything that's going on. The world existed far before the viewer actually got there, and you're just kind of. 
supposed to accept things that are happening on screen right now. Like, these have been going on for a while, and... Wait a minute. Sorry, I need to shut up for just a second. I remember this part, and I need to do it just so. Okay. Wait for that guy to walk back over this way. Woo! Sorry about that. I remember that part being specifically difficult back when I was a kid. Especially if I wasn't paying attention to it. Come on. Oh, come here. There we go. <laughs> That's something you really got to get used to in this game, is figuring out how the wind bullet works. Or, oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. Wind bullet being that little thing that comes out of Klonoa's ring whenever he fires it. That's his primary mode of attack, as many series fans will know. Or, I use attack in a loose sense. He can't really attack with it, just kind of, I don't know, transmorph enemies, I guess? Or transform? Why am I going for strange, weird terms that don't make any sense within their context? Well, you gotta be all fancy about that, man. Okay, while I'm over here, I may as well do this. <laughs> Yeah, you better believe that took me a while to figure out on my first playthrough. It's like, wait a minute. Can I interact with that? Oh my god, yes I can. And I can also completely miss it as it's swinging back and forth. Damn it. Damn it. Here we go. Ah, that's how you take advantage of your 3D mechanic. See, I love games that just go all out. That just do everything they can with what they can. And I believe that's the end of this particular stage. Yeah, not too much of a challenge, but then again, I don't think it was supposed to be. It is early in the game, after all, just kind of teaching you everything you need to know. Speaking of things you need to know, it's time to get a little more insight into our quest over here. Look at this place. Like, you noticed Lola's brooch, right? Well, they've got that same symbol down on the ground right there, and they've got the wings over on the pots on the side as well. Even the High Priestess has the bro same brooch as well. Everything is consistent in this game. Things that have to do with religion all have that same symbol. They have a connecting thread, a connecting people. Hmm. Wait a minute, why did it take the High Priestess a second to think about that? Was she unsure if, if Lola was telling the truth? Although this is kind of a messed up system if you think about it. Yeah, I rang the spirit bell. You'll just have to take my word for it. I'm not holding any proof or anything. <laughs> Stuck a feather in his cap and called it Kulanoe. <laughs> I expect great deeds from you for the sake of the world. <laughs> I will admit, this is one of my favorite little moments. <laughs> she's so happy, she could be, she's almost crying. It, I don't know, it's just kind of a heartwarming moment when you see a character that cute achieve her dreams. And this early in the game, too. Oh, by the way, check that out. Yeah, what I like about this little particular moment right here is... You see bits and pieces of the worlds around the bells, just enough to give you an idea of what the world might be like, but not enough to give you, I don't know, a bigger picture, not, not enough to outright say what they are and what they're about. You just, an, it builds anticipation in a very subtle way, I guess is what I'm trying to say. God, can I stop just showering praise on top of this game over and over again? Is that all my commentary is going to be? But I can't help it. The farther I go along and the more I learn about game design, the more I can appreciate just why I liked this game so much as a kid. It wasn't something I could articulate before. Maybe now I'm just so happy about the fact that I can finally put into words why this game is so amazing. You're a kind lad. Please watch over and protect our Lolo. Can do, ma'am. <laughs> Not even a word. He just nods. And you get what he's trying to say. I... Hmm. You know, there's a lot of debate out there about the silent protagonist versus the talking protagonist. And to be totally honest with you, I prefer a character that actually speaks. I don't know, I guess it's just a personal thing. 
I like somebody who actually has a personality built in. I mean, there is a purpose for a blank slate character, just somebody you can put your shoes into, but that's the thing about me. that In my mind, personally, there's always going to be a little bit of a disconnect. Okay, you may as well be watching somebody who is fun to watch instead of somebody who you make fun to watch. Or at least that's just my opinion. And guess what? We're already one step... Uh-oh. Well, I was about to say we are already at the first bell, but looks like there's one gigantic armored roadblock in our way. Leorana again. Leorana. Hibana. That's how you say a bandit in this world. Or at least I thought it was. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I mentioned this already, because I've done tons of takes of this in the first episode, but... I... when I... you want to know how much of a nerd I am about this game? When I was a kid, I actually tried to decipher the words they're speaking. I tried to figure out how to speak the Lunatian language. I spent hours studying speech patterns and trying to translate them into English. Unfortunately, it turns out that the characters are all just speaking gibberish. I was so disappointed when I figured this out. I just wanted to immerse myself that much further into the world. And everybody, this is our first boss of the game. This is Fulgram the Armor Beast. Now, if you try to throw an enemy at this guy, he's just gonna laugh at you. Armor is right, this guy's super tough. In fact, he just bounces enemies right off his body. And after laughing at you, he's gonna start attacking you directly himself. Luckily, it's not that hard to get over. So, how do you hurt this guy? Well, you attack his weak point for massive damage. <laughs> Typically. Now, if you're really good, you can actually combo off of him like that. Hit him while he's still spinning like that. And he's gonna turn back around here, which gives him an opportunity to attack. Not if I beat him to the punch, though. Let's see if I can do it again. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Alright! Now he's getting angry. Look at this guy. I mean, look at this boss. Look at his design and listen to the music. The red glowing parts. The fact that he's this giant armored behemoth blowing smoke out of his nose. It's the fact that he's easy doesn't play at all into his design. He just looks intimidating. The game treats him like something you should be afraid of. And that makes all the difference here. That is how you do good design. That is how you make a good boss. Even if the boss is ultimately no pr trouble at all. And there we go. That's the end of that. <laughs> Vision clear. Huh? Hmm. What is your name? Kloa! I should just start calling this game Cloa 2, Lunatia's Veil. That's gonna be a thing from now on, isn't it? Cloa, I'll remember you. And so they jump right down into their ship, although considering the way that thing is built, did they just kind of dimensional hop through the top wing of the ship? They fell right through that thing. Did they have to park it at an angle in the air? And if so, how did they land that perfectly in the sea to come back up during that time? Oh, well, game logic. Don't mind me. Just overanalyzing everything more than it needs to be. Chloa, use your power. So just shoot it, right? Just shoot it, Fox. Um, Klonoa, you gonna shoot it? Waiting for you to shoot it, man. <laughs> okay, I've, I've led you guys on long enough. What happens here is they actually make you press the button, like so. Yeah, they realize that this is a very important moment. Like, this is a landmark, a checkpoint in your progression through this world. And they realize it's kind of a special thing. They wanted to let you have a part in that. Kind of like at the end of Metal Gear Solid 3 when they make you finish off the boss. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> this episode has spoilers in it, by the way. Um, uh, anyways, yeah. Just, once again, it's one of those small little touches. I kind of think that's where the idea of quick time events came from. 
it was the idea of making your actions within a game more cinematic. But as this game shows, there's a right way to do that and there's a wrong way. I don't know, it's just an interesting point in design. Where are you? Some more cries for help and no idea how to actually do so. Ah, well, one element down, three to go. Save your adventure now? Yes, I actually would like to save my adventure because I have something to talk to all of you guys about. Now, for those of you who are fans of my FTW series, for those of you who don't know, for the win, I have a little bit of an announcement, and it's pertaining to this particular series. And as soon as this cutscene is done, I will begin to talk about it. All right, we're switching to post-commentary now because I have a bit of an announcement to make, and it's regarding my series called FTW, or for those of you who don't know, that's FNU vs. The World. Now, FNU vs. The World is a little challenge series I host on this channel, basically asking you guys to try and prove that you're better than me at certain video games, and it changes every single week, or at least I've tried to make it change, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, now I'm taking elements from that series and I'm going to incorporate it into my Let's Plays. How am I going to do this for Klonoa 2? Well, for those of you who have played this game, you know that there are time attacks that you eventually unlock for all of the bosses. And this is the challenge I'm going to be presenting to you guys. I want you to be able to beat my times for all of the bosses in this game. Now, what's the incentive to try and do something like that? Well, for anyone who can beat more than half of my times against all of the bosses in this game, I will offer you a Klonoa prize package. That's right, not only do you get the Wii remake of the original Klonoa, not only do you get my copy of Klonoa 2 and the strategy guide for it, not only do you get Klonoa Empire of Dreams for the Game Boy Advance, but you also get a special Klonoa hat I got for pre-ordering the Wii remake of the original. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Fnu, you just got back one of your favorite games of all time, and now you're willing to just give it away? Are you mad? Perhaps, but I'm certainly not going to make it easy for you guys. Oh no, I'm trying harder than ever in this one to make the challenges as tough as possible. So you're going to have to bring your A game if you want to take all of these prizes from me. So, I look forward to your challenges, and please join me again next time for more Klonoa 2 Lunatia's Veil. Vale. Until then, I'm What the Fnu. Later everybody!